In this video, I'm going to talk about lenses. So here's an overview of what I'll be talking about. And to start with, I'm going to talk a bit about focal points. So for a double convex lens, there are two focal points. So at the moment, what's shown are the two centers. So we've got center one, and we use a radius from that to draw the back surface. And then from center two, we use a radius to draw the front surface. But in addition to this, we have a focal point in front of the lens and behind the lens. So in terms of calculating focal length, we can use a very similar diagram and we're going to define some extra terms. So we're going to have R subscript one as the radius of curvature from center one to the back surface. R subscript two as the radius of curvature from center two to the front surface. And then D is the lens thickness, and this is for the thickest part of the lens. N is the refractive index of the lens, and then the distance from the optical center to the focal point is the focal length. We can then use the lens maker's equation to calculate focal length if we know the other parameters. And it's like any other equation. If we know the parameters, we can put them in and calculate a value. So uh, for this situation, R2 is considered to be a negative number uh, because it points in the opposite direction to the light ray. And we can do one over both sides to get F equals something. So previously we had one over F equals uh, the, all the terms. Uh, if we do one divided by both sides, we now get F equals one divided by what we originally had on the right hand side. Now there are simpler versions of the lens maker's equation. But if you want to get an accurate value, you need to use this version. Next, we're going to look at image formation with lenses. and We're going to use ray diagrams to understand what's going on. So first of all, if we have our object and we draw a light ray that is parallel to the optical axis or principal axis, that will hit the lens and then the, the light will be bent so that it passes through the focal point after the lens. OK, next we have a light ray going from the top of the object through the focal point in front of the lens, and the light will be bent such that the light ray comes out parallel to the optical axis. That means uh, that the image will be formed on the right hand side where the two light rays converge. So we can see that the image is inverted and we'll get a, an in focus clear image at that point. Now, in order to make the diagrams a bit simpler to draw, we're going to assume that the lens is thin and it makes it a bit simpler to understand what's happening. So again, we have the object, we draw a light ray in parallel to the principal axis and when it hits the center of the lens, as shown here, we just simply bend the light ray to go through the focal point. And then we draw another light ray that goes through the focal point in front of the lens. That means that the light ray will come out parallel to the principal axis. And again, where they converge, that's where the image will be formed, uh, where we'll get a nice sharp in focus image. OK, so based on the thin lens approximation, we can use something called the thin lens equation. And that's where we have a focal point of a distance F from the center of the lens to the focal point, a distance from the object to the lens of U and a distance R from the lens to the image of V. And the equation, the thin lens equation is one over F equals one over U plus one over V. We can also rearrange this to get V. So often we'll be provided with the focal length and the distance of the object to the lens. So we want to rearrange to get V equals something. So V equals UF divided by U minus F. Finally, another useful equation is to actually have magnification, which is minus V divided by U. Okay. 
with this thin lens diagram then we have the optical center and then we have a focal point in front of the lens and after the lens and we know that the distance there is lowercase f for the focal length. Now another important point on these diagrams is 2f which is two focal lengths from the optical center. So 2f uh, there's a 2f in front of the lens and a 2f behind the lens and they are just two focal lengths in front of the lens or two focal lengths behind the lens and these this is another important point that we're going to be referring to as we go through this video okay so now we're going to look at four scenarios where we get image formation so our object is going to be a green arrow pointing upwards and we're going to see where the image forms. So in this first scenario, the focal length is 20 centimeters and U, the distance of the object to the lens is 50 centimeters. So if we draw the lines through this, we can see where they converge and see where the image forms. So we've done that graphically, but now we can use the thin lens equation to actually work out this with, with numbers. So here's the rearranged thin lens equation. If we put the numbers in, we can see that V equals 33.3 centimeters. Magnification is minus U divided by, sorry, minus V divided by U. So we put the numbers in and the magnification is minus 0 0.67. So now for scenario two, we've got the object at 2F. Uh, the focal length is 20 centimeters and U is 40 centimeters. We can draw in our light rays and we see that the image will be focused at 2f on the other side. If we put the numbers into the equations, we can see that v equals 40 centimeters, which again is 2f. And magnification, put the numbers in, we get minus 1. For scenario 3, we're now in between f and 2f got the values here. Again, we can put the light rays in to see where the image will form. And we can also do this with the numbers. So put the numbers into the thin lens equation. We see that V equals 60 centimeters. Magnification is minus two. Fourth scenario then is where the object is in between the focal point and the lens. So we've got f equals 20, u equals 12, and we can draw the line parallel to the optical axis, goes through the focal point. Now the next line is a bit awkward. So we draw a dashed line from f to the top of the object and then continue that line up to the lens. We then draw that coming out parallel. If we then extrapolate the lines backwards, and see where they converge, that is where the image will form. So this one's a little bit different, a bit strange when you first see it, but just go with it for now. Okay, we can put the numbers in to the thin lens equation and we see that V equals minus 30 centimeters. So the minus signifies the fact that the image is in front of the lens. So normally we expect it to be after the lens and V is positive. V is negative this time, that show and this shows us that the image is behind the lens. Okay, the magnification, put the numbers in and we get positive 2.5. Okay, so now we're going to think about how we analyze these different scenarios. First of all, the magnification. So if the absolute value of M equals one, then the image is the same size as the object. If the absolute value of M is less than one, then the image is reduced in size compared to the object. Finally, if the absolute value of the magnification is greater than one, then the image is increased in size compared to the object. Thinking about the orientation of the image, if M is negative, then the image is inverted. If M is positive, then the image is upright. Final thing to consider is the nature of the image. And this uh, is again is a bit different, it's a bit strange maybe when you first come across these concepts, but again just go with these for now. If V is positive, 
then the image appears after the lens and it's said to be real. Whereas if V is negative, then it's said to, the image is said to be imaginary and it appears in front of the lens. So now we're going to go back over the four scenarios and apply the analysis that we've just been looking at. So in this case, the absolute value of M is less than one. So we can tell from that that the image size is going to be reduced compared to the object size. And we can also see that graphically with the diagram that we drew. M is negative, so therefore the image is inverted. And again, we can see that from the diagram. Finally, V is positive, therefore the image appears after the lens and it's said to be real. For scenario two, the absolute value of M is one, therefore the image size is the same as the object size. M is negative, so again, the image is inverted. V is positive, so therefore the image appears after the lens, and again, it's said to be real. For scenario three, absolute value of M is greater than one, therefore the size of the image is larger than the object size. Uh, in fact, it's two, and a, it's two times larger because the absolute value is two. The real, the actual value of M is negative. Therefore, the image is inverted. Again, we can see that from the diagram. And V is positive. So again, the image is real. In scenario four, the absolute value of M is greater than one. So therefore, the image is larger than the object size. Uh, by a factor of 2.5 in this case. M is positive, so the image is upright, and V is negative, so the image is imaginary. So that's been a video about lenses. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks very much for watching.